Yes, thank you. I've now been joined by Brad Gilbert, who's coached several players in the past, now working mainly for ESPN. It would be great just to look ahead to the men's quarterfinals with you tomorrow. And of course, it was Novak Djokovic that came through earlier on alongside Kevin Anderson. First of all, what did you make of the challenge that he faced against the big South African? Well, the first week, I mean, Novak was just rolling. And then Anderson played tremendous tennis. I still can't believe he won that second set breaker last night from 4-0 down. But when they stopped last night, you got the feeling if they would have played it through, that Joker would have crushed him last night. But Anderson came out today and really tested him. But to me, Joker will get better because of that match. Well, he's now reached his seven consecutive quarterfinal. Andy Murray's done one better than him because he's reached his eighth consecutive. But just a sign that Novak Djokovic is playing as well as he ever has on the grass here at Wimbledon. Well, how about 25 consecutive quarterfinals that he's made overall? Chilich, who played the winner of it, What's he thinking? He's 0-12 against Joker, and he was 5-1 against Anderson head-to-head. -head. He's thinking, come on, Anderson, win this. But to me, I, I obviously think that what happened at the French Open, everyone was expecting Novak to win it. And, you know, how quickly would he be able to put that behind him? And I think that that's where the coaching now, where Boris is going to have to, you know, do his best coaching. How do we put that past him? How do we focus on re-upping and winning this tournament? Well, and Marin Cilic would have been interesting, actually, wouldn't it, to see his reactions watching that five-setter between Anderson and Djokovic. But, of course, he came through for his first taste of Grand Slam success at the US Open last year, made it to the quarterfinals stage as he has last year and this year at Wimbledon. Do you think he can challenge Novak more than anyone tomorrow? Um, of the four quarterfinals, there's no doubt that the battle of the one-hitters, Verwinka Gasquet, is the most open match. The 0-12, you know, sticks out. And, and to me, Chilich, you know, didn't start his year until Indian Wells. He had been, you know, struggling physically. And I think getting to the round of 16 helped turn his year around, second year in a row of quarters. But the big thing is tomorrow, Wednesday, I'm a weather guy. I check the weather all the time. I go to all the different sites. It will be by far the windiest day of the tournament tomorrow. We will have wind in the high 20s. Um, so wind is an equalizer. Um, but still, if Chilich has any chance, he needs to have a great serving day. He needs to channel his Gorn Evenies of his hitch coach. He needs to be able to drop 25, 30 aces and figure out what didn't happen in those 12 and what can happen tomorrow differently. Well, you mentioned the Vavrinka Gasquet match, the second of the men's quarterfinals. Gasquet, of course, never been to this stage since reaching the semifinals in 2007. Many people wouldn't have picked him to perhaps reach this stage this year, but a fantastic comeback against Nick Kyrgios yesterday. And he seems to be playing some great tennis, but so tough to come through against, as you say, Vavrinka, now a two-time Grand Slam champion and playing with a new confidence. Well, the Stanimal is a different guy now at 30 years old. What's amazing in that matchup, one's 30, one's 29. And they've only played twice. They must have played a couple hundred tournaments together, but only twice. And the biggest thing for me, you know, I'm a numbers guy. I look at things. Before the match yesterday, Gasquet, 17 times in his career, had gotten to the round of 16. 15 times he lost. I feel like when Gasquet plays against, you know, the big three, when he plays against Federer, when he plays against Nadal, and you saw him play Joker at the French, I think he has a defeated attitude. Against Animal, I think he'll have a better attitude and think he has a better chance, and he'll want to do as much as he can, backhand to backhand, forehand to fair. He's got a sneaky serve. I think of the, the four, if you're going to tell me where an upset's going to come from, it's that one, because I just, on the bottom half of the draw, you can bank it. Murray's playing Federer Friday, second match on. You can write them both in straight sets. That's 100%. I already got it written in my program, and I guarantee you it's a second match on Friday. No question about it. Jamie Murray in the semis of doubles, Andy Sam in the singles. I don't think two brothers have ever been in the semis of two different events in the open year. Period. They're semis. You've called it. I love it from Brad Gilbert. Well, you mentioned Andy Murray, and I don't think he would ever have expected to be facing an unseeded opponent in the quarterfinals, which he now does in the shape of Vasek Pospisil, who's had an unbelievable championships, of course, tasted success here last year, winning the men's doubles titles alongside Jack Sock. But do you think for Vasek, his time is done once he faces Andy? Well, the scheduling makers did, the, I call him the popsicle, did him no favors on Monday. The guy plays a five-setter, has the, you know, He's having the tournament of his life in singles. He wins in five sets. For some reason, they throw him on in the doubles. Then he has to play Andy's brother, Jamie Murray, almost came back from two sets and nine, loses eight, six in the fifth. So he has to play 10 sets in a day. He had to play five sets 
on Saturday to win his singles against Ward in a possible 20 sets of, of tennis. He's played 19 in the singles. I just don't see how he's going to have anything left, not to mention his best shot is his serve. He just faced Dr. Evil. I'm sorry. Popsicle is no Dr. Evil in the serving. Um, he's had a great tournament, but all good things come to an end. Andy Murray playing way too good at the moment. Okay, and you think uh, Roger Federer is going to come through over Gilles Simon in the final men's quarter final? Perhaps I'm surprised that Gilles Simon actually beat Thomas Burdick. Federer may have been eyeing him up for a quarter final clash, but interesting to note this is a 13th quarter final appearance for Roger, a first at Wimbledon for Gilles Simon, and you think the experience from the Federer camp will prevail? Just like I written in the draw. Yeah. It's just guaranteed. I guarantee I'll drop and come back here and give you 50 push ups. We don't have that semi final okay. matchup. But Simone, I call him Simon, says it wasn't really much of a surprise to me that he beat Burdish. He was 6 to 4, now 7 to 4. But Roger, he's in the quarterfinals. Does he ever lose serve? He hasn't lost serve in like 100 and something. You know, he's on a roll. Fed fans are ecstatic about the way they play. You know, when they get excited, they go get a new sweatsuit, they go get a new outfit, get ready for his matches. He's playing great tennis. I'm not sure the guy ever ages. He, I, he doesn't even sweat. Why does he even need to sweat? He's playing fantastic. Him and Murray, that's a matchup I'm looking forward to Friday. Yeah, Roger Federer hasn't been broken once in these championships yet so far. Okay, so you're calling an Andy Roger semi final, bottom half of the draw. Who are you calling top half? I am going to go hmm, this animal to complete his career uh, semi finals at all four of the slams, and he's going to play the Joker. Rematch of the French Open just a few weeks ago. Okay, and I'm holding you to those 50 push-ups, well, by the way. I'm, I'm really going out on a limb. I'm just going chalk. I'm going that one, two, three, four seeds. That's a really rough prediction. <laughs> it's hard to go against it, though. I do get you. So if Roger Federer doesn't win tomorrow, Brad's going to do 50 push-ups for us. Also, I love the nicknames, Brad. Yeah, love pleasure. it. Brad Gilbert, thank you so much.